So resource type, and I'm showing that resource underscore type because it's a parameter in a lot of uploads. By default, Cloudinary uploads images. So if you don't specify a resource type, it will assume that you're uploading an image. And in this course, we will only be uploading images and that's mainly to save time. But I want you to know that you can do the same things with video and raw files that you can do with images. And I've shown here a little, a few file extensions for the types of files that you can do under each of these resource types. This isn't the full list, but just to give you an idea what we mean by resource type. So look for image uploads in this webinar. Now, data preparation. So one of the things I really want to emphasize is that it's not just about moving your data from X into the Cloudinary product environment. There's a lot, I think, of planning that you want to do. You may have your own metadata in your source and you want to move that along. You may not have metadata and you want to develop some metadata. When you're working in the cloud, it's important to think about files not so much as in a file system like you have on your laptop, but really in a cloud space where having context data, tagging, uh, structured metadata, the various ways that we have to add metadata to our assets is really important because when you go to search for those assets, add them to product galleries, whatever the use case, those are the items that are gonna be important. So planning and a little preparation will be really helpful. My example here is I have a, you can actually go find this out on our training org, Cloudinary Advanced Concepts. I've loaded a bunch of assets, images into GitHub, and then I'm serving them through GitHub IO. So you can see like, this is our Cloudinary training GitHub pages, uh, image service of a pineapple. So that what I'm going to assume for this webinar is that is my source. I want to migrate from my web into Cloudinary. So I am going to do a couple of different examples for the upload API. In one case, I will just use a list of URLs. So it looks like this. So I've just called, and there's some notes in the readme, a GitHub API that pulls all of this out of my GitHub repository for me. So I'm getting just a list of these GitHub served images. And that will be my source for one of my examples. Then I have another example where I'm actually accumulating some metadata about these things. So I'm just running in a Python script, just checking on sizes and I'm logging the date and stuff of the migration. So that's just to kind of give you an example and to reinforce that it is important to think about, do you just want to upload images like I'm doing, or do you want to add some metadata to it? Most of our examples in this training will be using metadata. So as we look at what we're going to do, we're going to actually see a couple of different, very different ways based on different use cases to, to do this migration. They all have common elements. So I want you to think about that as we're going through it. We're going to be gathering things into a list, gathering our assets into a list. We're going to determine our organization strategy. So we have folders, which are very visible in our media library. Metadata, and that can come in context metadata, structured metadata. We'll be mostly using context. And then tags. And we happen to have some AI add-ons that we can run with our upload API that will do that tagging for you. And they're amazing. They can spot tags. You can dial in percentages for how accurate the tagging should be. So we'll see a little of that. And then you're going to want to add that metadata to your asset list. So you'll see the examples where we're pushing that data up with, with the actual asset. Then we'll look at creating presets for auto tagging and creating derived assets. So What's going on there, preset is, if you haven't worked with that before, is it's a set of instructions that you can set up prior to calling your upload. And those instructions will be executed as the upload is taking place. So we can add our Amazon recognition auto tagging to it. We can tell it to create a set of derived assets. Like we know we're gonna be using 300 by 300 thumbnails and we're gonna be using some, you know, thousand by 500 hero images. So we're going to have, we're going to be able to get those all created asynchronously during the upload. Then we want to choose a method to move data up to the cloud. And that's where you're going to see different techniques, starting with 
just a back end. And at the end, we'll kind of use those because as you're trying to make a decision for yourself, well, which technique should I use? There are a couple of criteria or factors that you can look at to help that. Next step, when we think about the book load, we've seen in the previous step that we are likely to, to want to go through each of those steps and they will feed into taking us down a multi-threaded approach. As mentioned, some clients may come to us wanting to do a, a simple lift and shift. So they have a repository of images. They just want to take that and dump it straight into to Cloudinary and continue using their existing system. Um, some want us to remodel or flatten a directory structure based on maybe some embo- uh, embedded properties. Perhaps it could be EXIF or IPTC that's, that's stored uh, within the asset itself as embedded metadata. Others may be moving away from an existing dam, as mentioned, and want to retain that metadata that they've curated over the, the lifetime of the dam. And others may want to take the opportunity to completely reevaluate the organizational structure. They may want to start from scratch. They may want to enlarge in it and extend an existing taxonomy, or perhaps even simplify it if they think that the, the current structure is perhaps too daunting for the users and maybe not as efficient when it comes to, to searching. When it comes to actually getting these assets into the system now, some considerations you possibly need to think are how many assets are we talking about? If we're talking about a small subset and by small subset, maybe tens or hundreds of assets that you could potentially and just as quickly upload through the browser itself, through the media library, then maybe developing a script might not be the most appropriate use of your time. Uh, also how quickly do you want to get these assets into the system? Again, if it's as simply a case of drag and drop, that's obviously a very useful tool to have at your disposal through the media library. If you are looking to develop a script, how long will it take you to obviously develop the script, be able to apply the metadata? Do you have the resources available to you? So these are all considerations to think when, when moving across to a vendor such as Cloudinary. And also, as mentioned, do you want to make use of, of some of the add-ons that we've mentioned? So the AI auto tagging, do you want to make use of eager transformations to set up these ahead of time? There's another use case that we'll touch on as well, which is a lazy migration. So in the previous steps, as discussed, we have a discrete set of assets. We have that list of assets that we've curated from wherever it may be, it might be a a simple directory structure dump, or it could be an export from an existing system. But there are use cases where perhaps you want to only migrate a portion of your asset library into Cloudinary, in which case we, we do have a feature called auto upload. Alex will go into this in, in greater detail later, but just to give you an idea of what that entails and how it differs from the programmatic approach. Here you can create an upload mapping, uh, again, create the preset to enrich assets using auto tagging, using an upload preset within the system. You essentially create a mapping within Cloudinary that will map a specific folder. So if we encounter that folder within the URL, we know to map that URL from the Cloudinary derived URL uh, to push through to an endpoint that's been mapped to, to that particular directory. And those assets are actually only pulled in dynamically. So if an asset through one of those URLs is never requested, it will never be pulled into Cloudinary. So it gives you the opportunity to gradually build up a library without perhaps knowing exactly which assets you need to migrate to start with. This is kind of a, a, a no code, low code approach, and it can all be done directly through, through the media library. And we also have the Cloudinary CLI, again, another subject that, that Alex will take you through. CLI basically being a, a, a wrapper around the Python uh, guy, there's some key functions or methods that we'll pull out here. The uploader being the main one that gives you the opportunity to do single individual uploads. Useful again, if you're just trying to push simple assets in and, and maybe test some credentials. There's also the upload directory function, which allows you to, uh, I suggest it here, maintain your file structure using concurrent workers. Usually this will be quicker than attempting to write your own bash for loop to iterate over a directory. This one here, uh, will handle the concurrency for you in a much more efficient way. We also have sync. And again, I suggested here by the description, it'll synchronize the contents of a folder similar to a Git push. So you have the concept of a local and a remote. You can sync the local to the remote and vice versa. So it's a one-way sync, but you could obviously do it from both directions. And finally, we have the custom upload widget. So the upload widget really is there to provide your non-developers with a tool for uploading assets while allowing some flexibility and how those assets get uploaded. From the screenshot on the right-hand side, we can see that this particular upload widget has been set up to allow the user to crop an asset before it gets ingested into Cloudinary. In doing so, obviously, it means that you are altering the, the file before it goes into the system. Um, and this is very much a manual process. So the processes that we've talked about in the previous slides have been automated and through the use of scripts. This is very much a slower process for probably smaller amounts of assets to go in. Maybe you UGC, you user-generated content, or maybe it would be useful maybe just to drop in one-off uh, campaign shots or that kind of thing. 
You do have the ability to extend it through the use of upload presets, which allow you to group some functionality together and also prepare upload params and pre-batch to enrich those assets before those assets actually get pushed into, into the system as well.